Hello, Corey here, coming in to record your weekly energy update. And this one is for the week of October the 16th. And this is the second time I have recorded this. I spent 22 minutes and 12 seconds recording the last one, and it had no sound. I'm like, oh, so here we are. We're going to try this again. Now, these messages are channeled. I don't know if I'm going to get all the same stuff I got before, which really, truly sucks. But maybe the message was more for me than it was for everyone else. Who knows? Um, but here we are. So we are in the eclipse season. Again, we're in a the solar eclipse. So we have like two weeks of energy to work with. And this two weeks of energy that is work that we're working with is here to remind us to um, know that it is an opportunity. It may sometimes feel heavy. It may sometimes feel like you're the, the rush. And sometimes that sense of anxious feeling you got or that you're in a rush or that you got all this energy inside of you is because there is energy inside. It just feels like there's just like the burning desire to move, to do things. You may feel like it's easier to get up in the morning. You may be feeling that sense of, oh, I feel like I need to do something. What do I need to do? And so the rush is there, but it's energy you don't want to waste. You don't want to waste this energy. It is energy that is that is to be used for our highest good. It is energy that is here to help us in our own evolution and in our movements forward, in our growth. So here's an example of what they were kind of showing me. Imagine, imagine being in a relationship where you know that there's something that life is calling you to do. Like whether it's to return to school or you really wanted to go try something new, say you were only ever going to the gym, but you really wanted to start to go to yoga. Maybe your family was against you going to yoga. Maybe your old belief systems and what you were told about going to yoga or meditation and those things may go against your family's belief systems. So everything inside of you is calling or, you know, that person that you're with is, is saying to you, well, I know if you, if you changed and you're going to leave me. So guilting you into staying who you are and not trusting you. And so some of this energy will bring up that kind of that kind of thought process. And that kind of thought process is what's happening is that there is your your essence of your truth, your spirit, your higher self, your divine soul callings, your divine purpose to to live, to be alive. That's what we're here for. We are here to be alive, to come to life. And by being alive, I don't just mean having a heartbeat and a, you know, and a breath. I mean, by sparking this sense of, of no, of worth in enthusiasm, excitement, those type of things. And when there is something that just says, I'm ready to make a shift or a move. If you were who you were when you first went into a relationship and there's all these expectations to, that you stay exactly as that not question it, not change, not become anyone else. Just be that because somebody else fears that change, fears you not being you or fears you not being there for them. Then that narcissistic, acceptable behavior, not saying people are always narcissists, it's a narcissistic tendency. So it's a selfish, self-centered tendency to get someone to stay as they are so that they are comfortable. And it doesn't matter how uncomfortable that, that you may be. It don't matter how much it's hurting you. It doesn't matter. They can't see beyond that. Their story is, but you and I together are the best and we are the happiest. And that's what makes it work. Love grows and love leaves room for us to grow. And so it, bringing it into perspective of a relationship or, you know, or a family dynamic is, you know, love allows space for someone to grow. And if you are strong and stable in your own system, in your own belief, you are okay with allowing somebody else to to stretch out, to find out what their beliefs are, what they believe. And that's the energy. That's what the energy is telling us right now is that, you know, 
we have to be willing to challenge to challenge our own selves to challenge those beliefs to challenge that self to just say you know what old constructs and still living only by our well dug in sense of well that's just who i am that's the way i am that may be okay for some of the good things sometimes but sometimes some of the really good things are not the place where we're always meant to be we're meant to grow beyond that we're meant to expand beyond that we're meant to do more than that and so this energy is saying here i am here you are what are we going to do about this what are we going to do about this and so it has us look excuse me looking at what was over here sometimes and you may have found yourself here last year at this time you may have found yourself in this energy two years ago in this time of where you got you set a really good intention that you're going to do something you're going to get things done but you failed your own intentions you you didn't make it all the way through because we do fail ourselves why do we fail ourselves is because we set intentions from that ego's desire to do something but we don't look at the full perspective we don't look at all of the picture if we allow ourselves to be moved by the spirit of by the will of spirit if we allow ourselves to be moved by the essence of divine i know this is what i need to do i know this is my direction i have to i have to face this i have to be challenged by this i have to step into this movement and i can't worry so much about what the outcome is going to be I can't worry if somebody else is going to be comfortable in my change. I can't be worried if someone else is going to talk about me. I can't be concerned if someone else is going to, to be talking about the fact that I am cleaning up my financial situation and that I'm really, truly being honest and authentic with myself and just saying, I got a lot of things over here that the versions of me in my past didn't do correctly or didn't believe in herself or his self, that all of these things were there. And I had the intention because I knew it to be true, but I didn't have the potential. And intention and potential are very different. They tie together, they work together, but wow. meeting that potential wow. is to not to do it from shadow, not to do wow. it from our fear self, not to do it from the self that gets caught in the entanglement of trying to do it from the previous versions of ourself that was in the struggles and have not made the adjustments, the emotional, spiritual growth that needs to be made, that we know, it's 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 like saying, I know, I know, I know, but yet if we know, how come our lives haven't changed? And so we have this energy that's saying, here's the flow, and you can be behind the flow, you can be ahead of the flow, and both will have you moving, but what's it moving you towards? And what are you what are you ready to let move you? And so when the universal energy that comes in, it says, says, this is the energy that can move us. This is the energy that can move mountains. This is the energy that can bring big change. This is the energy that can shift a lot of things. And we've been since October and October is a shit show of a month. We called it from the beginning. We've been calling this for a few years. If you go back to my like 2018 video, to my 2020 video. It spoke that we're going to hit that the end of the storm was going to be in 2024. It wasn't the rise month. It wasn't the rise time fully. And then in October and the full moon, the last full moon video was right before everything else happened in our, in our world with, with the wars and, and with the what's happening right now. And it was all in there. And I said, it was going to, it traces back to a, to old stories and how old stories still have such power and such conviction and can cause such harm in our lives and around us. And so bring that into you. How many old stories and old energies? And I just know myself, last year, I had set this big intention, met with my accountant. I had all these big plans that I knew this year was going to be, that I knew this year was going to be the year. And so all year, and I've done nothing but beat myself up because the world's financial situation, the energy in it, my physical body, everything else did not go in agreement, did not work with what my thought were, my intention in my thought. So good intentions 
are not spiritual intentions. They're intentions we make because we sometimes look at who we were, we look at what we are, and, and we know they're true, and we know they're good for us. But we fail ourselves because we don't see all the picture, and we don't see the potential. And so when I look back and I'm like, did I really have the potential to match and meet where I want it to be? Probably not because my physical body had a whole different experience that was happening. And in the wait time of a spinal surgery, sometimes my, my mouth don't even work properly. My back, my legs don't work properly. Things happen. And so the, the, the process and the wait time so intentions are great. We all intend to do something, but what are we going to do about it? Sorry, I had to pause. Big message came in that I had to, to that I had to respond to. Um, so I had to pause this video. So many things that are interfering, not interfering, it's not interfering. So many things that are in this message today that go beyond what you're seeing in the recording, it goes all the way back to me trying to record the video, trying to get the video out, trying to get this done. And it's just like, there's just so many things that are just inter, um, intertwined into this reading that just speaks of life in general. So using this power of this energy is the key is in potential and the power of potential of spiritual potential that is here to work on our behalf to help us to emotionally and spiritually evolve to be able to and you may have been spending the whole year doing it but I just feel like there is changes that are transpiring and taking place that gives us the opportunity to be the change to see the change but we also have to recognize that knocking on the inside, all of that energy you have, it's not to be running around like a spin top. It's not to be constantly wondering how, why, all of those things, but to take action and to take action steps towards clearing up those old patterns and allowing our divine essence, our higher self, oracle to help guide us to the true intention and so with the new moon energy that we went through on this weekend one of the things that I did was was a it was from my um my soap ritual I can't remember I got I got I can't remember the exact I don't know why in this moment I'll tell you so my friend owns this company. And this company that she owns is called www.ritualsoak.com. And she creates these bath salts and they have little affirmations on the outside on dissolvable paper. And they're designed for doing new moon, full moon rituals. And you can order them and get the kit come. And then you do the three rituals that are in it. It is release, forgiveness, and creating and so when i started my 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 new moon ritual for myself i had i had all of this like i'm releasing this and i'm releasing that and then i heard no you're releasing and relinquishing control and i'm like i'm not that kind of controlling Con you're relinquishing and releasing your control of your healing and instantly I understood what that meant and it was and so in my ask and in the intention of setting an intention I would never have put this as my intention that I set the intention around allowing to no to be open to receiving healing in all areas of my life it is not something that I usually would use in my language. And I'm a healer <laughs> and I, and I have done so much healing work and I, but I didn't, I recognize that that intention was not set the same way that it has been set before. 
was set differently. And it wasn't set from my thoughts or from my thinking or from my desperation or from my fear. It was set from my spirit. It was set, it was set from my soul. That there was something on such a soul level. And this energy and where we are is truly speaking of this eclipse is not about shadow. It is about light. It is about love. And we need miracles. And we need change. And some things are just too big for us. So, you know, the things that we often, you know, that we talk about, the world needs change. Well, when we do things in all the small steps, it will take us exactly where we need to go. And what we need and what our life is supposed to look like will unfold if we keep doing all of the small steps, which requires action on our part, making it happen, do what needs to be done along the way, instead of believing the moment I say it, it's going to be there. It's not always the case. Miracles happen when we take actions towards the miracles. And if we all become that sense of the best versions of ourselves, or we, we do the healing on us, or we open up to the healing, if we match this potential and we get to this place within ourselves and not just that rush of feeling like, oh, I just, you know, did a Kundalini self, Kundalini and uh, yoga. And I just felt myself like come alive in my head. And it's like, okay, well, that's great. But what about the rest of the work? The rest of the work the rest of the place still needs to be cleaned up. It's like, you may upgrade your house, but you have to clean out the old house. It just is. And love Kundalini, nothing against that, but, but it's just saying, it's like, you have to, you have to become the person that you can feel and sense and know. And so sometimes the intention is, is good, but we cannot match that because we will fail ourselves based on the fact that we not yet, that we have not yet gotten to the place of where X hits, X hits the spot, right? Right in that, in the spot in our treasure chest is we got to walk the journey. And so this, this time and this energy and this healing and all of this that's coming up is speaking about if we all do the things on a world scale, we chunk it back down and work on ourselves and look into ourselves. And then the world itself may feel, may may become a part of the bigger change or no it will it will to a certain degree but old beliefs on weak foundations are never going to be strong enough to stand us and so when we look at what's over here this sense of what we hold on to over here too much is ego pride and when ego pride is what is what captures us and what holds us What's over here is that sense of the, the divine pride, the sense of the pride of the spirit is that, you know, the divine knows exactly who and what we are. And we're here and we are blessed and we are blessed beings and, and, we, are, and we have such potential and such opportunity that this pride says, when I restore my sense of worth and integrity, when I recognize the power of my yeses and my noes and why I use those, because when you say no to somebody else, your seed is inside of that no. When everything in you is saying no, 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 but the guilt is saying yes, 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 then you're responding to that sense of pleasing what's over here and denying you. And so when you can see that that no has this kind of energy and that inside of it, that yes, that's where the seed is. So that yes to you is a no. And that starts to bring forth the you that you have buried so long ago, who's knocking on the inside out, who is now, who is now anxious, who is now determined, who is now finally saying enough is enough. I'm ready to do this. I have been sitting back. I have been watching you. I've been letting you run the show. And this is what you keep doing. And it's like, and so now it's time to let me out. Now it's time to let me step in. And I'm not going to be all the way there. And I'm going to mess up. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. But I'm going to start saying yes. So if you, if you're, you know, if you're the person who finally says yes to you and the person over here is like, oh, but when you do this, you're going to leave me and da, 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 da. You're going to say, but what if that never happens? And that story they're telling you is so that they can trigger the response in you. 
It is to get you to respond instinctively to fear because we have been built on a world that is designed to get us to respond to the fear. And all of that energy and all of the time that you have been trying to nurture the fear instead of the faith inside of you, faith is awakening. And that means to have that sense of hope that I can make it. That little self inside of you has never lost hope. It has never lost its faith. It has let you run the show. And now it's saying, I'm going to enter in and I'm going to be here as you say yes. And you're going to mess up and you're not going to get it all right. But we're on our way. And when we're on our way, things may change. Relationships may change. Life may change. But I'm not going to care what anyone else thinks. I'm not going to look back. I'm not looking back over my shoulder. I'm not coming back in to listen to what other negative things are being said. If you want to grow, you want to evolve, you can come with me, but you got to grow and evolve with me. You will always be that person who is in somebody else's story of the past. If they have not watched, been a part of your expansion, your growth, if they have not accept your forgiveness, whatever it may be, now not everybody is forgivable in some situations. I'm just going to say that not that. And I mean, you reach out to say, I forgive you. It's forgiving yourself for what you've allowed. It's forgiving yourself for what you've kept believing because the things that you kept believing are the things that kept you in, in unhealthy relationships with everything in your life, whether it is people, whether it is finances, whether it is your own thoughts, no matter what it is. And so by that self of, of forgiving, by that potential of forgiving yourself, for believing, for allowing, you actually start to set yourself free. So this has this energy that includes getting into the free, into the flow to trust the timings and that knowing that you'll never be late for your own party. You'll never be late for your future. You'll never be late for this. But if those little contaminated little pieces, these little bugs in your story, these little things that keep us here, then your destiny will always include the things that are over here, right? Is If this is your past will always become your future. If the story is not eradicated, it is not eliminated, it is not healed, it is not resolved, it is not forgiven, it is not let go. Your past will always find its way to creep into your future. And if that's not what you want, if you want your future to be something that is in that space of when you met your future self, when you met your potential, when you seen it, you knew it, that knocking that's knocking on at your chest saying, here we are, let's go, let's do this. And we are not going to, we are not going to fully succeed and we are not going to get it right. We're going to stumble. We're going to fall, but we're going to keep going because now I know what's inside of me. And I know this, this, this desire inside of me. It is called love. It is called love and love grows and love expands. And when love grows, when the, when the power of love grows, instead of the love of power, everything changes because the love of power and the love of being in the, in the, the fear stories or in the controlled stories or in the controlled environment. How do you ever know? And so if your heart is calling you to get to a yoga class, but everyone else tells you, that's evil and bad. Somebody created a thought that that was evil and bad and that their thoughts now have a space in your head and you believe it. And the moment you believe it, then evil, evil exists in your head. And so you believe something, but yet it makes you feel good. Yet it's doing something to make you feel healthier. Yet it's helping you spend time with yourself. Maybe the biggest fear was that somebody feared that if you spent time with you, and with your own thoughts, you would start to think for yourself. And the moment you start to think for yourself, imagine, and I mean, think, I don't mean letting old thoughts control. I mean, thinking, thinking from the heart, thinking from the gut, thinking from the high heart of what else is possible. What else is there for me? What else? And this is where we are. We're at a crucial time and we have a lot of power in these next few weeks. And yes, the message is big. And yes, it's coming from the voice of someone who's done a lot of the hard work, but I'm channeling this through from the divine as if we are all being told, I'm not coming down to meet you guys where you are. You're going to have to rise yourself up to here. So if you don't understand it, if it feels like it's being, it's over your head, 
then how about you rise above the water level? How about you get your head up out of the sand? How about you rise up and try to reach us instead of us waiting for us to come down for you because your spirit, your higher self is not going to swim around in your emotions. Your emotions will always exist. The stories have only quarter truth to them and life has so much more for us. And our job is to become the person that we need to be. We are here to more than just exist. We are here to be alive. We are here to come to life and we're here to feel life. And if we spend our life in the fear of death or, or fearing endings, we're doing something that you cannot avoid, but only piece of us ever dies. And that's why your soul self, your spirit, the divine will always be wiser than you because your human gets this one opportunity. What are you going to do with this one opportunity? That's what we have. We love you. Much, much love. You can go to my website. You can purchase my books, my Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards, More Than Existing, My Truth of Existing Beyond Reflection, all available there. If you're in the Slave Lake area, I'm there for an in-person two-day workshop on Saturday and Sunday. You can sign up on my website. There's It's a small group. I'm only taking 10, but there is a couple sp spots still left. And with it, with the class, you do get a deck of the Everyday Goddess Oracle Cards and you'll be spending two days with me and I'm doing it in a small group. So it so it can be so, can be so interpersonal. We can really connect. Um, and on the Friday on this coming Friday, so on the 20th, I think it is, I'm at the library or 19th, whatever that day is. I'm at the library in Slave Lake. You can come check me out, come check out my work. I will be speaking about the books and that'll be three I think it's 3 p.m. So Friday the 20th, I'm at Slave Lake, Alberta Library, um, 3 p.m. Come, come visit. Uh, I'll have some of my books with me. I'll have both books with me and I'll have the cards with me. And I will also be signing as well. But you can come listen to me talk. I'll be there for an hour or a little bit more. So come visit me if you're in the Slave Lake area on the 20th. It is free to come see me there. Um, but if you want to sign up to the workshop for Saturday and Sunday, get in and do it now. There's only a couple spots left available. So um, yeah, that's what I have for you. And if you like these videos, please subscribe because I'm just like trying to push this, trying to get these numbers up. I am so close to the thousand and I've been at this for years. Um, and I'm very honest about these things because, you know, I got nothing to prove to anyone, but I've got like almost a th pretty much a thousand videos recorded in here. And and I, and a thousand and like just under, I think it's just under like a thousand <laughs> followers <laughs> after all these years. So, um, if you love these videos and you're watching them, please do subscribe. I know it's, you, you kind of had to sign up or whatever to subscribe, but it's, I think it's free to sign up. So, um, that's my push much, much love. Thank you so much. And I look forward to much more videos to share with you. And if it doesn't resonate with you this week, maybe next week's will. Love you. Bye-bye.